Hello, I'm doing my usual thing of doing a YouTube live when basically nobody's going to be able to listen or watch. Listen, um, I suppose listening is quite important because uh, it's a beautiful day outside. Uh, most people in America are in bed, I presume, and uh, but you've got to work with what you got. And at the moment, it's summer holidays, meddling kids and all that. So I thought I'd do a um, some reviews, reviews-ish rambles of, of classic books. Now, I've kind of done this by looking through the books on my shelves. Um, but I've been making myself revisit old books and I thought I could share some of my findings with you or re-findings if you, if you want. Actually, the reality of it is findings because even though some of these books are classics and I kind of think I read them, uh, I've realised I've only kind of thumbed through them and looked at little bits and pieces because looking at them again, I'm going, well, I just missed all this, this stuff. So the book we're going to look at today um, is this. This is the Inner Card Trilogy. Uh, originally published as three separate, obviously three, trilogy, um, Inner Secrets of Card Magic, More Inner Secrets, 59, 19, 60, 1961. And I just want to read something to you um, by Harry Stanley uh, from January 1969 in the Genie, Gen, uh, Inner, More Inner and Further Inner Secrets of Card Magic, now published together in one big bound volume, make up the finest ever collection of top quality tricks and slides. Get them on your shelf and you'll be set for life for this type of material will be fresh in 50 years time, which is very apt because it is still fresh in 50 years time. In fact, it's for someone like me who, you know, without being a, a dick about it, I, I kind of, not compared to some people, but I know myself, I, I do a lot of practice and reading around card magic. Going into this, I'm still learning. I'm still picking these things up and my, and my friend Alex said to me the other day he's talking about reading a book twice um, uh, and his blog's called uh, Slightly Ambitious about as in slight sleight of hand a uh, new blog but he, he and I don't mean he's, he was talking about writing about this and I, don't know, I hope he doesn't mention, uh, mind me mentioning but he was talking about the fact that when you read a book twice and very few of us do we read a book once and then we're desperate to get onto the next thing and I'm, I'm so guilty of this but you read it once, you're seeing the author's point of view. You read it twice, um, you're looking at it differently. I'm not going to go into that because he can go into that on his blog. But reading this again, I, I just, I mean, I looked, I picked up, I bought this book way before, like most of my, a lot of my books, before I was able to do a lot of the stuff in it. And, and part of the things that switched me off of this, to be totally honest, and it sounds really pathetic, but I think that designers will understand, is when you pick up books and they've got like, a lot of modern magic books, uh, like Principia up there, they've got this beautiful font, they're set out, like, really easy to read, loads of big pictures that are really clear. That you, it kind of draws the eye and it draws you in. Whereas these older books, like the Marlowe ones, you've, you've got to make that little bit more, more of an effort because straight away there's something about the font that just, I, I found it, and I don't know whether it's my approach, but I found it just a little bit more difficult to to process the information at the beginning. Very quickly you get over that, and that's the point. So when you first open these books, um, if you were an established card person, you know, the first couple of tricks are those tricks where you look at and go, yeah, actually they're better than you think they are, but they, you know, taking things easy, uh, easy tricks, you kind of go, yeah, okay, you know, there's a hat involved in one of them, so you tend to kind of bypass that, which is a mistake that I went back and forth. Actually, you could adapt that for so many uh, things on stage. Very easy tricks, but straight away you're into the classics, man. And I've got, you can tell it's a decent book. Oh no, we all know it's a good book, but I, but I don't think we look in depth uh, enough at the moment. Um, I've got this, I've got, you know, I'm wasting post-it notes here. This is, a, this is not good for the environment, but it's one of those books where you just cane the post-it notes. Uh, matching the cards, and matching the cards is a, a trick that I recently taught on my, my course and looked at again and relearned again. And it's a simple idea. If you can do a double lift and a glide and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's great. But it's one of, based on one of the first tricks I ever saw and the first that made me go, uh, what card tricks I ever saw that made me kind of really, I don't know, that thing of showing me three different cards that the magician apparently got wrong and genuinely got wrong, again, in that way that is convincing. And then you turn those three cards and they actually match. You basically switch three cards in front of a set of spectator without them knowing. And then that revelation is just really, it's just great. I just, I think it's one of my favorite types of trick that. And, and, and I always, years and years ago when I got into it, didn't know the origins. And so matching the cards is something I just, you know, go and, I do teach it on the course, but you don't need to learn it on the course. You can, you know, you do all that. Um, a bit of marketing, a bit of soft selling there. Um, Okay, color changing deck. This is these are all the origins of the, a lot of tricks we do. And there's this thread. I, I tend to 
again i bypass the thread work because it's not something i do with cards but you we all know it's brilliant so well worth looking at that and when you look at the originals of these you do pick up new stuff you look at you, you i didn't realize i could make it more effective uh, by by adding that vernon touch uh, so to speak ginsburg poke all that kind of stuff elastic touch okay so um so i'm just literally leafing through there's a reason why i put post in those there uh, twisting the aces another you know how many of those have we had you know twisting the aces so many ways and and some people think the original is flawed because of the way you kind of have to do this almost like a reset thing. I've done it because I had to relearn it to teach on the course. And again, people just really like it. I do a, a thing based on that, which is Roger Smith's Maxi Twist, which I originally learned on the Bill Malone DVD, which are the best DVDs you can buy, I think. Um, but you, it, for, for that sort of magic. Um, but again, just, it stayed in my set for years and years and years. It's a twist in the aces kind of effect, but it just, storm for lay people so those people that don't think those things work for lay but they really really do um out of sight out of mind i mean what just something i haven't really concentrated on in the past just a beautiful piece of magic which i've got this has got a pink one in it because this is something that i'm going to go back to because again just doing gigs and loads of tables it isn't something i did and i, and I think that it's something i really want to explore um, you know, the origins of the McDonald's, McDonald's Aces, um, McDonald's $100 routine. If you want to see one of the best McDonald's Aces, watch Ricky Jays and 52 Assistants. Um, the Notice Cascade. I struggled with this move for ages. I mean, I'm a flourishy geek, but I struggled with this cascade for ages. And I read this and there was just one little thing I was doing. I was right. That's where it is. And it just changed everything. Um, it's such a beautiful revelation of a card um, if you use it for a revelation. But it doesn't go into that here. Uh, going into details about the riffle shuffle, the pull-out shuffle, the pu push-through shuffle. You know, this is all stuff I kind of missed the first time. An amazing, an amazing chapter on crimps. You know, being so powerful. I mean, if you can do a crimp, it just, I mean, you can just, you can, it's really cheeky. I mean, you can just do anything. You can give them the card to shuffle it and just get, but we don't do it because it, we think it's so simple. So we look for the complex answer to the complex solution. So I'm a complex solution to the complex question sometimes. And I think that sometimes it's best, something like the crimp is so simple that we sometimes overlook at and we don't realise what we can do with it. Uh, cards to pocket, wow, that's a project. I mean, that's, I mean, it's a, again, I think a flawed trick, but something, something about the way you hide, hide the cards I don't really like, but I saw Jared Kopp do it in the session and just, you know, he was saying, oh, it's a flawed trick. I thought he did it brilliantly and I thought it was a great trick. Um, loads of stuff on the psychology of forcing a card. The great thing about the classic force, I'd heard people say to me so many times, you know, classic force uh, with the card above the break. I've always classic forced the card below the break. I couldn't work out why that was. And it just tells you in here, it's because you can feel that card. You don't even have to look at the deck. So um, all those little nuggets, those little Vernon touches, the trick that cannot be explained, this idea of just writing down any card and just seeing where it goes, which you've got to be very brave to do. Um, and the push off count, the reason I'm telling you all this is because this is the stuff, if you just flick through, you sometimes kind of miss. Free card Monty. Um, and this, you know, this, this staring him in the face trick at the end, which I thought was just a, such a great thing. A, a brilliant uh, thing on palming, uh, which goes into the gambler's, the gambler's palm, the gambler's cop. And it's nice to read these original uh, writings on the gambler's cop and the gambler's palm. Of course, there, there might have been writings before that. I'm sure they're in Tarbell and stuff. But just to see them this clearly uh, with this level of, of detail. I've just learned so much on this second deals etc uh da, da, da. there's one thing oh yeah that everywhere and somewhere at the end was is just a the really clean lovely version using a top change brilliant chapter on the top change by the way in here giving you those timings giving you that thing he does of knocking the matchbox over which we now do with the card box um it, there's just so much so in my usual and this is a live review so and i'm not doing it in, in the same way but in my usual reviews i do pros and cons well the, you know the pros are it's just got so much in it and it's got you know when you read from vernon you know he kind of knows his stuff <laughs> he's kind of done it you know when it says in it vernon does this all the time like this you know he has and you know he's a master you know the professor so you know so often i think we go go for the new and you know so many people say this and it sounds so like I'm such a has-been, but uh, like a, one of those old people that I, I love the new stuff, you know, I absolutely adore the new stuff. It's not one or the other, but it's been so useful for me to go back to these older books to get through that barrier of maybe the language um, 
which I suppose is one of the cons of this. Uh, one of the things is, you know, if you're used, if you're young and you're used to, you really kind of fleshy put together books, the, the, the font, as I mentioned before, and you've got to get past that. But the other thing is there are a few moments in it where it says things like swing the card and you kind of go, well, swing it what way? I don't really get that. But then you take it and play with it and you can kind of un understand what it says. Uh, so so I, I think this is an important thing for me to do as a, car, as a teacher of card magic and, and as a card magician. But again, it goes back into this thing of becoming an expert. You know, I don't want to be a person that only knows three tricks. That's fine, but, but if you want to be an expert and you want that freedom to go, okay, well, that feels like we'll do that then and you can draw on all that knowledge, you get it from this, and I will say again and again and again, it's not books or DVDs, they're both brilliant, but something happens when you put the, you invest the effort into reading a book, something happens that isn't the same as watching a DVD, it just seems to stick more. I find that when I read a book, the first 10 minutes I quite struggle, I feel quite tired, but then after that I get into this flow, which I don't get with DVDs, I find it a, a real struggle, unless I'm on the instructional bit where I've got the cards in my hand. Um, so this is this was published by L and L in '96, by the way, the trilogy. And L and L, you know, not only famous for their glorious um, uh, enthusiastic audiences, um, but also they've done so much with their DVDs and their books. And I really suggest you. I think you can probably pick this up on a download on the L and L site for very little. But it's a beautiful book and one I think that you'll just cane. Uh, so there it is. Uh, my thoughts on Di Vernon's Inner Secrets. There's so much you could say about it. Please comment. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if you think that anybody would like this, um, I have decided I'm going to take a bit of a risk and spend maybe a bit more time on it to try and see if I can make it work financially. And I don't mean make loads of money off the channel. I mean, because people sign up for the Card Magic course or look at the Card Magic course, it might one day be something that uh, I can just do. I'd love to do more and more of these videos. So any comments would be great. Like, subscribe, share would be wonderful. Like I said, if you know somebody that might like it, I know I'm babbling on. And um, and please do go and check out cardmagiccourse.com. Uh, 9.99 a month. It's you know a daily price of next to nothing with so many uh, videos on it. So thank you very very much. Have a great day. See you later.